Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Monday, October the 4th, and we're going to pick up once again here in the wonderful Encouraging Word of God. It has been a little while since we have been together and that I've had to uh, make the journey through open heart triple bypass surgery, and God has been faithful and good and kind, and He has brought me through, and I'm on the other side on the recovery now, finally able to have a volume of breath and uh, limited pain and and so I just wanted to get back to the Word of God on a faithful consistent basis as it is the establishment of my heart and my soul and uh, it is what brings me constant encouragement to know that my God knows where I am my God cares about the situations in which I go through in life and even though some of those are challenging even though some of those are hard and difficult to journey through our God is faithful and the Word of God reminds us of that this morning as we pick up here, 1 Peter chapter 5. I want you to listen to verse 10 and 11 as he says, But the God of all grace, and he's already done told us in Scripture that his grace is sufficient for us. Uh, when we're going through times of trouble, He, he uh, Paul had asked for God to remove the thorn from his flesh, and he said, My grace is sufficient for you, even though you're having to go through this difficult time. I want you to know that the God of all grace is with you. I'm going to be there walking right alongside of you. He says, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. And so he's coming. He's coming to remove us from this situation and bring us into eternal glory. But he's already called us into that place. And he says, if you'll just trust me, if you'll just hold on to me, I am the God of all grace and I will carry you through. You just keep your eyes focused on me. And so he says, but the God of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And that's the whole goal of life while we're here, is to walk through these trials and tribulations because we live in a fallen world that we caused. God made a perfect world. He made it good. And we chose to rebel against that God. We fell into sin. And sin has been passed down to you and I, and we continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. But we have a God of grace that he has not uh, cut the, uh, the timeline off just yet. He's allowed us mercy and grace to continue to live in this moment. But he's coming soon, and he's called us into that eternal glory where he's going to make us perfect and establish us and strengthen us. And, and he's going to settle us, and what a joy that is. And there's what he says in verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So even though sometimes it may seem like he doesn't have dominion and power, he absolutely does. And so in light of that truth, in light of, in light of the, the grace of God that overshadows our lives every single day, how are we to live in the light of that glorious truth? Well, we left off at verse 4 uh, of our last time, way back on September uh, the 13th. And we pick up here in verse 5, and notice what he says. Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one unto another, and be clothed with humility. And this is something that our, our country and our hearts and our souls lack uh, tremendously. It's not just here in our country, but around the world. It's a thing called humility. We take up much pride, and God resists the proud, and especially the kind of pride in which we display uh, from our home uh, field advantage here in America. We have the wrong kind of pride. We're not humble at all. Uh, we're taught not to be humble. We're taught to exert ourselves, to uh, make ourselves known, to, to, uh, to, um, to show our pride. And uh, we'll strut our sinful pride down the streets as well. Uh, we're not humble before God and we're not humble before one another. And certainly we're in great trouble because of that. But the God of all grace is allowing us time to continue to say, Oh God, help me to see the error of our ways and to turn and repent and turn and come to you that we may be able to have your favor once again. Don't we need the favor of God? Oh boy, do we need the favor of God like never before. And so notice what he says. He says, be clothed with humility for God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. And so if we don't humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, we're going to be in trouble. This is not something God does to us. This is something we must do in light of what God has done for us. 
Uh, we must humble ourselves or else we will exert our pride. We will lift ourselves up in proud and um, um, uh, not humility. We'll be lifted up in pride and, it, and God will resist us. And I think God is doing that because of our proud um, flaunting of our sin and ourselves in the face of, of God and, and, and a more in front of one another because notice what he says in verse 6. He says, he says, God resists the proud but gives grace unto the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And so he says, this is something that you have to do. You have to be willing to say, God, I need, I need help in humbling my heart, not only before you but also before the world around me that I may live a life that is pleasing in your sight. Because well, I don't want you to resist me. I want you to share that grace with me. I want you to cover me in your grace and your mercy. And we're going to need that grace in, your, in his mercy. I needed his grace and his mercy. Oh, like these past few weeks, like I never knew I would. I didn't know that day was coming. I didn't know uh, the challenges that I would face. But I, God has been faithful. And he has certainly allowed me to have that grace that's carried me through. Because notice what he says in verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The good thing is, is we got a God who cares for us. If we would just humble ourselves and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways, and he'd hear from heaven, he'd forgive us of our trespasses, and he would heal our souls and our land. And certainly we need that right now. But that's exactly what he said in Second Chronicles 7.14. That's exactly what he says here. Yeah, um, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves. And here he is. He says, man, listen. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And that's exactly what he's going to do with us because our Lord is coming. He's called us into his eternal glory and he's going to allow us to be made perfect and established and strengthened and settled and he has dominion forever and ever amen and i pray you go forth today mightily in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ and i pray that you are encouraged